on that door, Bob. <laughs> no <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> And that definitely isn't in the Met. And uh, before coming back to clearly the best station in the Met, which is Coin. <coughs> so I'd like to take you back to Bob's first day at West Hampstead. So he got up, 
he walked to the station, there was a lot of mist around, because there was a lot of mist around in Victorian London. <laughs> <laughs> smoke, smoke, yeah, smoke, smoke, there's a smoke. He was walking, the lights, light were lit by the gas lamps, <laughs> clearly at the side of the road. Jack the Ripper was at his side. Come up here, I'll... Uh, <laughs> Um, he turns up at the station, this is for the police officers, the area cart went out to get the call, and then he met some members of his new relief, and obviously at that time it was tuning, so they had their Boer War medals and World War One medals displayed at the same time, but apparently they were saying something about the job being a word that rhymed with ruck, <laughs> so some things, some things never change, so yeah. Um, and they were moaning about the new technology that had been introduced, which was the telephone. So that shows you how old it was. But clearly West Hampstead was not Bob's first choice. He wanted to come out of training school and come to Croydon. But clearly the Met hasn't changed, so he was sent to West Hampstead. So looking back on um, the notable incidents in Bob's career, I know in 1973, Bob, you were first on scene at the Carlos Jackal where he shot Joseph C from, from Marks and Spencer, yeah. okay, good. And then you, in 1978, supported in the arrest of Astrid Pohl from the Barda Meinhof gang, yeah, good. So we've got living history here, ladies and gentlemen. But I think the most poignant moment probably, Bob, if um, we can talk briefly about it, is the 8th of February, 94 going to, you know, the robbery at the post office and the sad murder of Derek Robertson. And I know that you were involved in that and tried to give Derek first aid and everything else. But, you know, hopefully today you leave with happier memories and everything else. So that's just a brief trot through your career. I think before we do some sort of awards and presentations, there's a couple of thank yous I'd like to say. Thanks to Bob's family for turning up today. Really appreciate it. You've made the day for us. You're terrible lines. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. Yeah. And uh, from my point of view, I'd like to say a big thank you to Chris. Yes. Yeah. And Emma for all of the uh, sort of arrangements they've put in place. And also. <laughs> And also to specialist colleagues from the Mounted Branch and the Dock section who, uh, who turned up, because you've really done Bob proud. And I think for him, he's going out on a high. And I think, um, you know, the fact you've got so many people here, Bob, from throughout your career, pay his testimony to you. So finally, what I'd like to do, now usually there's such a backlog on the certificates of service, they get sent out as and when the commissioner can get round to them. But we basically went up, and sort of like kidnapped him and we got him to sign yours, Bob. So this is to you, Robert Brown, Queen's Police Medal, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> Joined the service on the 17th of February, 1969, and retired on the 15th of February, 2015. But I think the most important words are actually the following ones, which was, the officer's conduct was exemplary. Bob, it's been a pleasure working with you. I'm a shy retiring person, I don't know. I'm just so glad you've all come to this final thing. Thank you for the good wishes you've all given me, and I've enjoyed the time in the job. I think it's a very difficult job, and we do it as best we can. And, uh, and I wish you all the best of luck in, in your future. That's all I can really say at the present time. All I'd say, right, there is food available for everyone. Right, knowing police officers as I do, please let Bob's family come up and please get one sandwich. <laughs>